Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore my wide world of pens. And we see in front of us a pen that you may say bits and pieces of it I recognize, but I've certainly never seen a cap like that on a barrel like that. And I'll say that is correct. You have not. This pen has a history to it, which we'll explore. But I just wanted to give a little drive-by, show you that it does have the identifying uh, model at the bottom of the barrel, so we definitely know what the barrel is from. The cap comes off in a little over a quarter turn, so it's not a perfect fit, but it works well enough. And we see the reason why this pen is in front of you. That is definitely a nib that I've never seen on a Waterman's pen before. And I think we need to see how that writes. And then we'll do a little history. Stay tuned. As we can see from my hand, this is a small pen. We'll give you the lengths. But... What's nice about it is it posts. It posts well. It posts deep. It posts secure. And length is definitely fine in the hand posted. And you can see what I've done, which I've done all the time, is the nib, the lever, and the clip all line up. When I reassemble a pen after I put a new sack in, I try to always line up the nib and lever because I like to to use that when I'm filling from the bottle. That section is definitely small. We'll give you those dimensions. But like I said, what motivated me to put this pen in writing order was the nib. So let's see how that nib writes. So maybe you've already guessed the ink that I'm putting in. Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. Some people may say, do you have any problems putting Noodler's inks into vintage sack pens? And I say, absolutely not. I've never had any issues. So let's see how this ink works in that interesting ground waterman's nib. It is wet, as we would expect with a vintage nib. I think it's getting a little bit low in the sack because it's certainly gushing out ink a little bit more than it normally does. And we are seeing some feathering. I've noticed uh, my these last couple pages in this Fabriano notebook have not been as ink resistant as the other pages have been. But then this is putting down a ton of ink which is amazing. And, you know, there's a natural line variation that's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. I just like it. Nice pen to write letters with. I wouldn't call it an everyday carry, but I certainly like it. Let's see how this pen came into existence. About a week ago, in the course of cleaning out the basement to make room to start our seedlings for the garden this year. Uh, Janet found this pen lying on the shelf that probably had come out of a box or somehow got dislodged and has been sitting there for 20 some odd years, my guess. And she showed it to me and I go, interesting. I like the nib. But of course, I needed a cap if I was going to try to put this pen in working order. So what I did is I went to my drawer of Waterman's caps. Let's take a look at that drawer. This is my drawer of Waterman's caps. Over my many years of going to flea markets and collecting pens, when I saw bits and pieces that I thought would be interesting, I picked them up and threw them in a drawer. 
So this is them. And that's not all the caps. I also separated these into a separate bag because these are the larger caps. We can see what looks like some number seven caps with the uh, rings that indicated the color of the nib that's there. This is a cap I originally wanted to use on that 3V barrel, but uh, the memory card in my camera had filled up, so I had to put in a new one. I've been using these for a number of years now. They work great. I've never had any issues with them. And on Amazon, they generally run under $20. So now I have a new one in there. We're ready to go. I can put another almost 17 hours of video on one of these cards. This is a cap that I originally thought about using for the 3V, but the clip is held in by that top finial, which is actually a threaded screw, and that's the screw that was at the other end, which is corroded and split. So for this cap to be usable, I would need to find a replacement for that screw, which I might do someday. But you may ask, what other drawers do you have? And so I have a drawer of caps, and then I have a drawer of bodies. As I mentioned to you before, these are pretty much all Watermans here. And I've gone through and tried to match up as many caps and barrels as I can. But wait, there's more. Yes, I have a drawer of sections and feeds. And I probably have almost as many Waterman nibs as I could fill these feeds with. I separated out anything that dealt with the vacuumatics. I have them here. So I could probably spend a lot of time going through all of my Waterman bits and assemble more Franken pens, but I put together a bunch of them. I've given away a bunch of them. I think I may have even sold one or two, but you know, I've moved on and this will be there for me to be interested in looking at when I get motivated and when I want to do something that might be more creative than just looking at new pens. So here is my little box of Waterman 3Vs and some Thorough Reds and some other models that they made in the 40s. Interesting varieties of blues and grays and browns and very interesting. Most of them have very nice nibs. And I keep these little tags to explain what the state of the pen is and what type of nib it has on it so I don't have to just take it apart every time to figure out what it is. Yeah, I've given some of these away because I think they just make great little additions to people's pen collections, particularly like this one. There's some nice initials there. NLB. So when you get something like this that you can put together, it's nice that I have the parts and you can see there's very little threads involved. And all of these have just right nibs that write really nice. And that's what makes them good. Uh, this one I was particularly proud of because this is a Waterman cap on a maybe Todd barrel. And that's a beautiful, very long tines in that nib. This was done for a particular person that I met, and I could not get back in touch with them. So here's another combination of uh, an overlay with a different cap. Here's a very bizarre combination uh, of this uh, number seven cap with a nice blue-based uh, hard rubber, ebonite, orange, you know. So I've done lots of combinations, and we'll continue to do these. Hopefully you've enjoyed taking a look at some Frankenizations. Some of you vintage aficionados may uh, cringe at what I have here, but I enjoy it. So in the process of putting together pens, I had a viewer ask me if I had a pen I could sell, so I put together this pen, found the body, found a cap. Cap would probably work on the 3V. 
But I thought it would be a good time to show the difference between the 3 and the 3V. V would generally associate it with vest pocket. But it's basically a shorter barrel by uh, quite a bit. Same lever filler, same section, same number two nib, but obviously this one has been ground, so we can now see the difference between that. And I think we should just show that standard three nib writing. She can have it in comparison. So that's how this nib writes. I have Pilot Blue Black in here. What a nice neutral ink. So I'm impressed with this pen I put together. I took it all apart, cleaned everything, realigned the nib and feed, and it's a great writer. You know, and it's just a pen that you could probably pick up relatively inexpensively because it's not collectible, but most of these number threes have great nibs. They're made in uh, mid to late 30s up until the, you know, early to mid 40s. So quite a many, many of them were round and they were a low end pen, but certainly wrote with the Waterman style nib that I happen to like. So now we're back where we started. Hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, short little view of some of my collection that is really not a workable pen and this one is one that I've just assembled because I wanted to see how that nib would write and I think it's going to need a little bit more work to it I think maybe a little bit too wet for this pen but that's the fun part of vintage in, in my view playing around with it exploring it putting together something that has never been put together before so one of the interesting things I wanted to show you, this is a triple thread between this cap and barrel. There's one. There's two, and that's the one that the uh, lever and clip line up. And that's three where we started where the clip is there. So each of those engagement points is a third of a turn so with multi-threading like that, it allows you to have that cap be secure like it is with just a quarter turn. I'm certain when this was all new or if this cap was on the pen that it belonged to, it would probably be more closer to a full turn to put that cap all the way on, but it, it works for this Franken pen. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for tuning in and following me and watching and hopefully enjoying it. Mr. Crab would come over and also say thank you. He's silent, but I'm pretty certain that's what he would say if he could speak. Time for closing remarks. So thank you all for watching. This is not a pen that is good for writing at a low angle. As you can see that end of the feed is really close to the end of the nib so if that touches the paper you're going to get a lot of ink come out but I definitely do like the way this nib feels on paper really smooth gives you some interesting line variations yeah I may pop that whole thing apart and realign that nib but that's for a future day so we've reached the end of this video Hope all of you are safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying life, enjoying your pens, 
enjoying putting ink on paper. Maybe not as much as I put on here, but I enjoy tinkering with my vintage pens and playing around with them. And I'm very grateful that I have a lot of bits and pieces to Frankenize. Maybe we'll see more in the future. We're going to say bye for now until the next video.